going to start off our video with audio checks because this is a one woman operation and we got to do what we got to do. We'll turn the music down a little bit. But that is Coolio. Um, if I can find somewhere to put this guy. Salutations, friends. My name is Brianna Sikion Bond, otherwise known as an ordinary scholar. And I got this arc for the Louise Ortega Survival Club. And I read it a little bit ago, was absolutely astounded that I got it. I think the author was like reaching out and was like, hey, any like autistic queer people want to read this book? And I was like, hi. <laughs> and I got it. And, you know, literally, if there was a more, there, you know, I was about to say if there was a more perfect book out there in this world for me, I'd love to see it. But honestly, there have been... Not only is this year, like, the number of autistic books that I have been getting for ARCs is astounding. I also have an autistic book coming out later, but that's beside the point. But I've also, like, other books that have other topics and whatnot to chat about that we have, have been reading, have been uh, just hitting all the right spots. I'm currently reading Things I'll Never Say by Cassandra Niebold, and that, mm, mm, I Ugh, great book. The next book that I'm going to be reviewing, Healer of the Water Monster, is another book that, like, ugh. That, that one in particular is, like, a, if imagine if a book that had you are absolutely not the audience for was written for you <laughs> kind of thing. But today we are talking about the Louise Ortega Survival Club, and we've got quite, there's quite a lot of shenanigans happen in this book. We've got a whole host of themes. I'm going to start just keeping a themes uh, little page over in this side. As you can see, I'm just going to start keeping a themes page on this side. Just, just because, you know, some of the books have a lot of stuff that, you know, we want to, like, be aware of. <laughs> as well as like some of the things I want to talk about might not be some of the, the like advertised topics of the book like these parents these parents I want to talk about but we're gonna we're gonna just start having like a themes page on the side of the book and because I don't really have any like my usual notes situation going on I have just the, the thumbnail of the book right there and we're looking cute so let me just go ahead and read off the themes that we've got listed here today uh, so we've got, you know, bad home situations, rape, autism, some absolutely vile, disgusting, terrible, abusive boys, support groups and bullyings and rumors. This book takes place in high school, in a high school. So I, I probably should put high school on there too. Like there's some, there's some, there's other things going on in the book. Like she's also got some dance going on. But that's not really one of the things I'm going to be talking about much in, like, honestly, there are, like, two things that are going to be taking up the majority of the time with this review, and then I feel like I'm going to run out of time, so we didn't put, we're trying to focus on a lot of things that I'm going to be talking about. But let's go over plot of the story. So, our main character, Ariana, is at the party. It's kind of, like, before the events of the book. The book takes place as she's, like, it's, the book starts as she's leaving this party before that she's at a party with this pawn scum of a human being that we refer to as Luis Ortega and they have sex at the party but she struggles to process the fact that for a lot of reasons it was more, it was rape and not consensual sex big one being that she struggles with situational mutism she cannot verbally speak and so she verbally did not give him any form of a yes which is good, good there's a good reason to believe that that's why he started interacting and hanging out with her to begin with is because she verbally couldn't give a no even if she was also and he didn't really care whether or not she could verbally give a yes um so that happens the next day she gets a message from someone on tumblr which we love we love tumblr <laughs> i should get back onto tumblr uh hello let me, the thing's out. You can come in. 
Uh, the cat that's on the thumbnail of the video is currently asking for attention, and so he's probably going to show up to you. Uh, the next day, she gets a message from someone on Tumblr, and they she agrees to meet up with them because they're they you don't want to offer her some support they don't really know exactly what happened but they know louise is a piece of human trash and one offers us some some support and so ariana agrees to meet up with them and when she does there's actually like a whole group of people all of which have been fucked over by louise in like different ways um so throughout their time together like the main thing that got Ariana interested, he's, you know, you need to come on camera. The people want to see your face. There he is. Hello, biggums. Say hello, biggums. He's so cute. Uh, so the main reason why Ariana wanted to meet up with them is because the person that was kind of in charge of that, like, original Tumblr account was like, we want to get back at Louise. And she's really down for that idea. But for the most part, it's a group of kids. They're mostly just bonding and hanging out while Ariana is still like going about a lot of things to try and get revenge from him. But they do bond. They become friends through this because support. Um, and you know, time, time happens and some of them become more than just friends in this in this little group and it's super cute because we love love here um there's also like a whole bunch of shit going on in ariana's home and we're gonna come back to two things we're gonna come back to ariana's home and we are going to come back to this revenge that they get on louise in a second this is a spoiler review by the way also just so we are clear Hey, yo, you, you want to be on camera now? You you just need to finagle yourself into a position that was on camera? Cool. Dope. Love it. Uh, to start, as someone with situation musicism, I loved seeing someone with that in a story. I, like, didn't grow up be having... I wasn't told I was autistic when I was growing up, which was great, which was super useful for me in life. There was, like, someone posted a, like, timeline of life, and it was, like, uh, especially being, like, a black girl with autism, and it's, like, age seven, you're super gifted, age, like, 15. Granted, my timeline was a little later, because theirs was, like, age seven, you're gifted, age 15, you're severely depressed, and, like, that depression hit by seven o'clock, by seven years for me, but, <laughs> and then, like, 19 you're, they give you, they say you have bipolar tendencies, and then, like, 20, you find out you're autistic, 28, maybe ADHD, too, so, like, something like that, so that was, like, the timeline for, like, that was the situation for me, and I wish I'd lived in an environment, an environment that not only understood, like, allowed me to understand what was going on with myself, but also allowed for the accommodations that you see Ariana use in the story like she for the most part she uses her phone text to speech out sometimes but she mostly like writes down stuff to communicate and then at some point she's given a watch that she can use to communicate and like those are accommodations that I love I like I wish I had had and I wish I like was com more comfortable using and like getting being able to pick up but I love that there are going to be kids coming up seeing that as an option for them when they need when they need help in communicating and verbally is just not something that they can do. I love that that is out there to show people. Um, for better or worse, this book, if someone were to ask me like, hey, Rihanna, what's, what was like high school when I growing up for you? This I could just pass them this book. And maybe, like, highlight that it's, like, the, especially, like, the first 20 or so percent of the book and just be like, yeah, that. That is a good, that's a good jumping off point. Uh, starting this book, I was genuinely overwhelmed with emotion from, like, it's, it's that feeling you get when you talk, when people are talking about, oh, 
we want rep for queer stories for dif- for different races and all like that sense of belonging and that sense of feeling normal that we talk about with those diff- different uh, identities that still applies but it feels like it gets like there's a lot more of a fight to be had when it comes to s- stories depicting mental health and trauma because people with those like with those experiences might also benefit like I personally and someone with those experiences that benefits from seeing those outside myself seeing hey other people have gone through that other people feel the same way and that's part of why I publish that is it's just it is just as needed for people who have experienced trauma to if they to find community and sometimes it is in seeing the stuff depicted in media in books in certain ways and that is for us to decide individually what we need what would help what would benefit us and for me seeing this it was just so uh, it felt so good to be able to bond with the story and the character in this way in these ways that are often treated like the worst parts of me in when in other company and so that is also he's just falling he slipped down uh so that is also something i really loved about this book uh her parents let's uh, okay so i don't get me wrong this was a quick and easy like I've, I, five stars, no doubt about it. Like the end of the book, I was screaming, I was whooping, I was cheering. I've never squealed so, like, ah, when reading a book. I've never squealed as much as I have when reading this book because these kids falling in love was so cute. And yeah, like I loved everything about this book. And so like absolutely 1000% recommend this book her parents piss me off (laughs) so a thing that you get in the story is this other situation she has she's going through like some shit at home her uh her mother she cheated on her father uh again way before the time of, uh, of the events of these books and since then, she her mother has been like really, really dependent on Ariana to be her sole support system because of the strain it has put on her marriage. And that's not healthy. <laughs> that's super not healthy. And it's it's like Ariana is very not okay with it. Um and like that, it like again, this is unhealthy. But you also get to a point in the book where her mother starts to get more and more, uh, like aggressive and upset when Ar- with Ariana spending time with these friends of hers because she then Ariana is now not there to support this mother and. It gets to a point where uh, there's another instant of cheating and dad leaves the house. Ariana is like already just upset with her mother over the whole situation. Wants to go hang out with her friends because like this is something she told her mom about before. She wants to go hang out with her and mom forbids her from leaving virtually for no reason. And again, it's like very aggressively not trying to let Ariana uh, hang out with these friends so she can keep her to be her sole support system. And that is like that is very much creeping up on these lines of child abuse and like a like domestic abuse to, to to force this child to not be allowed to hang out with other people. Pretty much only reason being that you want them all to yourself that's that is that is abusive that is abusive habit and it is not 
out of it is not malicious that's like that's one of these like lines that you ha- that you can have people like not really get is it's not malicious what she's doing but she is still very much causing a lot of harm to her daughter she is lashing out at her daughter simply because her daughter who should not be her sole support system is tired of and ex- literally exhausted from being her sole support system especially when she herself Ariana herself is mad at her mother for what's going on and just does not have the capacity to try and uh like emotionally carry her through this when she Ariana needs her own time to figure this out but that's one thing that's one thing altogether and I also I feel like that like that itself just consumed into just this relationship between Ariana and her mother is a I think it was very like well described how it was confusing and, and over how it was confusing Ariana because she didn't do anything wrong and yet she was getting in trouble and she was being forced into this uh far to suffocating relationship with her mother i think that i think that was shown really well my issue is when dad comes in uh so you see ariana she like not runs away but she does like leave to go hang out with her dad she wasn't like no one expected her to be there she goes over there and is like Talk, dad's like so why'd you come by and she starts uh going off she's like i hate mom she's so frustrating i can't stand her and the thing that bothers me is dad stops her and is like so what we're not gonna do is like talk shit about your mom the problem then is he's granted again this character is not like his character is that he does not talk about emotion he does not really talk about emotions and stuff like that and he has explicitly not really wanted to talk with her about her mother since this whole situation happened the problem is again what this what this child's going through is abusive her mother is like because her mother wants her to herself she is now keeping her from relationships with other people to maintain that relationship to like force that relationship between them and she may not have been going about talking about in a way that made clear what her what like what was going on and how that was being like she like she was purely just talking about how emotionally she felt but by dad cutting her off that means he was not getting to the bottom of what was going on. He was not fine. He was not really hearing out her how she was feeling. She was. He was not supporting her through what she was going with through with her mother, and it put, got to a point where the only reason he ever found out that Ariana was going through this abusive situation with her mother was because the mother herself realized that it was a problem and decided she wanted to no longer be that and obviously the issue then is that had her mother not made that decision of her own volition then ariana would be stuck in that without any without any support from the other human who is supposed to be there to protect her because that person is now drawing the line at I'll protect you from anyone but your mother. And that is something that like really, really bothered me in the book. Not, uh, it's like, because it's, it's definitely a thing you would see in like a, the, like your average everyday TV show. But because, and like, here's the thing is because it is a far more not okay situation than your average a mom like won't let me wear a crop top kind of like issue that's where you see how that can be one of those kids don't get full protections kind of things kids are 
an oppressed class because you are so determined to not be caught between your child and your partner you are not protecting the person that needs the most protection kind of that's that's how you get into one of those situations and it it's then a well maybe we should actually find a way to better talk with any child like if your child is grumpy and upset that like mom won't let them wear a crop top maybe we should still find a way to have a conversation about that so that way in the event that is something that the child is that is more serious we're not just dismissing the emotions that the child is going through because maybe they do not have the ability to express in a more serious way or in a more oh we have another child it, maybe they don't have the ability to express in a way that better displays the impact and the urgency we should still find a way to have a conversation when they feel those emotions so that way the situation is getting completely sussed out the situation is getting completely evaluated and you know at all times like what they are going through what they're being exposed to what problems they are having because again if like it is like there's a point where you have to acknowledge that uh, maybe she i have another child and i want you to see him hello this is chestnut oh he's stressed he's a little stressed he's a little stressed but you know what i mean it's yes you want to be a unit as parents but to not actually communicate with your child means that they are left extremely vulnerable and in most cases of abuse the people you're most likely to be abused by are people closest to you and so when you are not allowing anyone to talk bad about those people closest to them you're not leaving room for them to to express when harm has been done to them you, if especially if they do not have the words or the ability to understand that what that harm is actually super not okay so that was that was my major problem with the specifically the dad like it's obvious like the mom is supposed to like they're you're supposed to be upset with what the mom's doing and the story makes that very obvious i think with what the dad does that's where it I it didn't feel like as much was said to be like hey no he should like he should have given her a chance to say how she was feeling that kind of thing on to my last major thing that I wanted to talk about see I also like have so much trouble this is why I, want, I like having all of my like book quotes and stuff so I could use the quotes to expand on summarizing the story and like not get so uh laser focused on <laughs> bits like this but i'm not allowed to share quotes so here we are <laughs> talking about this second like it's not even like a b plot i'd say it's like a c or d plot of this uh website so Ariana is in journalist she in journalism she wants to be a journalist she likes doing that kind of thing and like it at her school she wrote a whole article that got them to change their dress code because sexism and there's this website for the life of me I cannot I I it's is it like get him Mia Mia or I forgot what the website's called but there's this website that does journalism especially I think like feminist journalism that she is obsessed with and she's been submitting her school stories to it but they never really accept them they just kind of give her a like forms rejection kind of thing so in the story we have two attempts at getting revenge on Louise uh first 
Ariana makes a article detailing the different abuses, manipulations, rumor spreading of Louise. And she submits it to the article. They reject it. And throughout the school, it doesn't really do anything to Louise's popularity and whatnot, unfortunately. It, he honestly even just kind of takes it in stride, uses it as like, oh my God, all these people are so obsessed with me. And it dies from there. Then, because uh, this whole book is her struggling to process what happened at that party. She eventually gets to the point where she's finally able to admit that it was a rape. One of the other girls in the group says you know after ariana admits that she the other girl is like hey that same thing happened to me and they start reaching out to some other people that had been wronged by louise but wouldn't say anything before saying like hey this is what happened to me i've got a feeling something similar happened to you and she starts gathering all these stories about him raping all these other girls at school and it's as she's doing it, she's doing it because she feels like there needs, something needs to happen. Some, like there needs to be some form of justice. And like it is, she's still, uh, like it's still painful. It's triggering to read these other people's stories. And like, oh, she just, it isn't, like she is doing it because it needs to happen, but it's not, I, don't, I wouldn't say it read like it was a cathartic experience for her. Like she didn't like, like it didn't, it felt like it needed to be said, but I without doubt don't think she would ever want to write about this again. And, but she does put this whole story together, puts everyone's stories together, submits it to the article and it gets accepted this time. And I... Again, this is not, this isn't a thing at all with the story. I more just hate this as it being a thing that exists in the world we live in. Because I get that a relatively big online uh, media platform isn't going to post a story about school dress codes because there have been so many of those at this point. I get that. And I don't recall what some of the other things were that she had submitted to them. But it just, like, it feels not like this huge, oh my god, she made it, oh my god, like, our, our girls, our girl finally got it. It doesn't feel like that for me because where does she go from here? This was, again, not... A pleasant experience to write and put together this whole story hopefully she never goes through something like this ever again so what does she write about next because the things that she was very passionate about writing and researching were not good enough and now the only thing that gotten accepted was this extremely traumatic experience that again I do not think she'd want to keep writing about and so it's like it is this feeling of so it doesn't bring a lot of joy it doesn't feel like a major win because it feels like a stopping point I like I get nothing she was passionate about writing and researching was made it into this story made it into these articles, made it into this uh, web blog thing. I don't re remember exactly how it was described as, but what, like, what does this character do when none of these things that do not completely depend on one of the most traumatic experiences of her life is how does she go on when those are not accepted by the same people that uh amplified her trauma 
because it would be one it would be like literally one completely opposite thing if it was something she enjoyed writing about if it was extremely cathartic if she like if this was if she had a thousand and one things to write about this experience and wanted to get it all out that'd be totally fine but it it felt like some it was an extremely uncomfortable and unpleasant experience for her to write that and so when that is the bar and when that is the requirement of the things that would be accepted by this site that she has so desperately wanted to be a part of when when that is now like a requirement to continue to be a part of that it's like I just can't it it doesn't feel like as much of a win because I don't know how she is going to be able to get go forward without either re-traumatizing herself writing about this thing she does doesn't seem like she wants to write about anymore she doesn't seem like she wants to keep getting into but also like or like feeling like she has to experience that in order to be good enough for this specific magazine i if there was a story going forward I would honestly want to see her make something of her own so that way she has the room to talk about the things that she is passionate about and she can make the space for her to say these are the things I care about these are the things I want to talk talk about these are the things that make me want to be a part of journalism and that's okay and that's enough and that is important just as important as these other stories those those are also important things that need to be discussed that is what i would want to see from this character but that's not really uh, like we didn't we left off the story left off with that trying to be the major moment for her and and so you didn't get any sense that this is some of anything of that sort anything of her next steps as she tries to uh, like continue with this career that she wants in a world that might not necessarily in have spaces already for her in like it especially at like as a high schooler you know but that is like uh, that is one thing that it's again not like the book did anything wrong I understand why that was seen treated like a highlight for the story I understand why that was treated like the uh like the holy grail she finally made it because that is something that she's wanted this whole time but because of what we're talking about and it just doesn't sit it doesn't sit well it doesn't feel like that win because of how of what that means for ariana and all her writing previously and going forward that didn't feel as relieving to see in that story but uh, like like i said earlier i still i like i absolutely adore this book i will read this book again i will recommend this book t till the day that i die i love 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 this book and i absolutely like i truly could not re recommend it more it's an absolutely fantastic story i highly recommend people check it out its birthday is tomorrow so you can get it from libraries buy it like absolutely check out this book for sure but, you know, I, when I can't get obsessed over quotes of a book, this is what happens. And so we're just have we just have some, like, some small talks. We just had some small chats in addition to me 
reiterating over and over again that I absolutely love this book. I love reading books with autistic characters, and I can't wait to keep chatting with you guys. But that is all for me. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, Valedictions friends.